Hi everyone and welcome to this flower tutorial. Today we're going to try and build the federated learning system for image recognition using Flower and TensorFlow. To follow along, you will definitely need a bit of background on federated learning and machine learning. But if that's not the case, don't worry, we're planning on releasing a lot of content that's geared more towards beginners. Now that this is out of the way, let's get coding. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is to install the dependencies. For this project, we'll only need Flower, so that's, we're gonna use pip to install them. Flower is FLWR and then TensorFlow. There we go, yeah, I've already installed them, so it's quite quick. And once this is done, we're gonna be able to create our first file, which is gonna be called client.py. And this file is going to contain all of our um, centralized machine learning workflow and the Flower client that we're going to use for the federation. So the beginning is going to be uh, quite standard, I guess. Uh, we're going to import TensorFlow and this first part is just going to be uh, the standard uh, TensorFlow machine learning process. So the task we're going to do is image classification. For this we're going to use a model from uh, Keras, which is going to be a mobile net v2. There we go. v2. And then I'm just going to put the input shape. Um, I'm going over this quite quickly because this is not really relevant for uh, federated learning. This is just a standard uh, TensorFlow uh, pipeline. So next, I'm just going to compile the model with. Um, uh, Nadam optimize, optimizer, oops, sorry. Um, then spars. So this is just defining the loss function. Mm -hmm. Hopefully I'm not making any typos, which would be a miracle on the first try. So here we have our model already, and then we're gonna load the data um, into those variables, uh, x10, y test. So here uh, we're also going to load the data from uh, Keras. So here, I believe cipher 10 dot load data. All right. Okay, so here um, we have basically everything we need to do centralized uh, machine learning. So for instance, if I would like to uh, run a fit round on the model, I can just do, uh, sorry, model.fit uh, and then give the training data, it would be y train, the number of epochs, for instance, one, and the batch size, 32. That would trigger a fit uh, epoch for this model on the, the Cypher data. And so what we're going to see is that to uh, go from this centralized workflow to the federated one, it's actually going to be pretty easy. The only thing we need to define is our uh, client. So I'm going to call it flower client, and it's going to be a subclass of fl. Dot, oh, actually I need to import uh, flower as well. And I'm going to import it as FL. So that would be fl.client.numpy client, I believe. Yeah. And then, so this flower client is going to need a few functions. The first one we're going to declare is going to be the fit function. And you'll see um, it's quite simple. It's going to take two parameters. Uh, so we actually the first one is called parameters and the second one is called config parameters is going to be um, the parameters that were sent from the server to the client for a, a given round and the config is also it's a dictionary of strings to uh, any scalar so any number and this is also passed from the server to the client and so this function is actually going to first set the weights of our model to parameters here and then call well actually we can just copy this and paste it here 
um, yeah. And then we're going to return. So we need uh, to return uh, three things. The weights of the model after training. So with TensorFlow, it's quite easy because we can just use the uh, implementing functions of the model object. Uh, then the length of the training data, because if clients have um, different sizes of data set for the training, uh, we might want on the server side to aggregate them differently. And finally, we can also return a dictionary, which can contain, for instance, some metrics we could uh, compute here the loss function or um, the accuracy and return it to the server. But here we'll just leave this as uh, empty. All right, so wait. Oh, yeah. I guess the indentation is wrong here. Yeah, it should be better. Um, so this is our first function, and then we're going to need a second one, which is the evaluate function. So this is once. Uh, the server has aggregated all the, um, the parameters from the clients after the training. It's going to send back the aggregated weights to every client for them to evaluate this new model on their own data. So this is what we're going to do. It's also taking uh, parameters and uh, conf config. And now uh, it's very similar. We first set the weight with parameters. Whoops. Um, and then we're going to do, uh, oh, sorry, because we're computing the loss and the accuracy, uh, and then model.evaluate, and then, and just keep in mind that those functions are like standard uh, TensorFlow functions. And then the things we need to return are first the loss, so we always have to return the loss first, then the length of the test set. Um, and finally, we also return a metrics dict, uh, just uh, as in the fit function. Here, we actually computed the accuracy, so we can return it like this. And we could compute uh, some other some other uh, metrics and send them back uh, through this dict. Then one last function that we need to implement. This is actually the first one that gets called, is uh, get parameters. This function uh, needs to exist because if on the server side we don't initialize any weight, the server is actually going to uh, pick a random client from those that are connected and call this function to initialize its weight. So that's why. And here we can just return uh, model dot get weights. There we go. Okay. So now those three first line are are our standard. Uh, machine learning uh, declaration of model and data. And then this is where the federated uh, learning magic happens, really. Um, and as you can see, we try to make it as simple as possible. And the last thing uh, we need is just to start the client. Uh, so in that case, that would be start numpy uh, client. Okay. And here we're gonna need to put the server address. Note that we have not um, written the server yet. This is going to be our next step. And then we pass our client that we just declared here and we instantiate it. Okay, so here, once we, if we run this file from the terminal, it's going to uh, start the NumPy client, but for it to be able to connect to the server, we first need to start the server. And for this, we're going to declare it by creating a new file, server.py. So this server.py file is going to be very simple. We're going to import flower here as fl as well. And then we have just one function to call. Uh, so fl.server.start server. Yeah. And here, the server address is actually going to be um, 0 .0 .0 .0, uh, dot zero dot zero dot zero dot zero. We need to uh, specify the port here. So note that the address here we use zero 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 to be able to bind to this address from uh, the local network, the client side. Uh, so this address is going to be localhost. So my machine 
uh, because I'm going to be running both the client and the server from the same machine. But you could uh, very easily connect uh, from another machine from your local network or uh, from another network if you have some way of exposing those ports to uh, the public internet. Okay, so here we have this, and then we can also pass in a, a config. If we don't, uh, it's just going to be the standard um, uh, config, which I believe is three rounds. So yeah, we can add, we can try it without the config, just to make it extra simple. Um, and I believe that this is everything we need. Okay, so now um, on our terminal, we're going to first start the server. So here we go. Um, now the step it's going to be in is the initialization of global parameters and currently it's requesting initial parameters from one random client. No client is connected to it so it's not actually doing anything but if we start the clients here and here so it actually connected to the first client, uh, requested the parameters from it and then connected to the second client and when it saw that they were enough clients to start the effort round, uh, it went ahead and started it. So now it's doing the training. So this is actually local training uh, from the, the initial parameters that the server sent to the clients. And we can see the, the accuracy is going up. And once this uh, training is done, uh, each client is going to send their weights back to the server. The server is going to aggregate those weights and then it will send the new weights, the new aggregated weights to each of the clients, which will then evaluate this new model on their local uh, data. So we're probably gonna speed this up a bit until it's, it's finished. Oh yeah, um, so by default, the server con config is actually one round. I didn't notice. So uh, we'll, we might want to modify that afterwards. I mean, actually, Let's do this while we wait. So we're gonna add a custom config to have three rounds. So config equals fl.server.server config um, and num rounds equals three. Perfect. I'm actually uh, wait. Okay, perfect. And now, if I start the server, okay, nice. Mm. So now it's gonna run for three rounds. So that's gonna take a bit of time. So we'll speed this up. The federated training finished. And here we see, so the different steps, it's not very, maybe I can close the clients actually. Um, yeah, that's better. So here we see the different rounds. So the first round, we first sample the clients uh, and send them the weights. Uh, then they do the fitting, uh, send their results back. Then we start the evaluation round. We send the weights back, the aggregated weights this time. And then the clients send their results back. And we do this for three rounds. And here we can see uh, the loss it actually uh, decreased just a bit. This is only uh, three rounds and each round is only one epoch. So it's normal that the results here are not crazy. Um, we can change the number of epochs if we want uh, by just modifying uh, here. Instead of doing one local epoch, we could be doing, uh, for instance, five. Um, and also one thing to keep in, in mind in this example is that the data that each client is running on is actually the same data because uh, as we're just starting the clients on the same machine and we don't uh, implement any partition uh, method, we're just using the same uh, data. So this is just an example uh, to showcase how easy it is to go from a centralized workflow, which would be those three lines and maybe this fit function to a federated uh, workflow in just a few lines of code. Also, I just wanted to make a quick note about the aggregation strategy that we used. Here, as you can see on the server side, we didn't provide anything. 
uh, to our server. So by default, it's going to use FedAverage, but we could provide another strategy uh, like so, and then we could use um, uh, strategy, uh, for instance, uh, fake median, like so. And now our server will aggregate the weights using the fed minion strategy. Note that Flower provides quite a few strategies out of the box, but you could also implement your own. There is a lot of stuff we didn't go through in this tutorial. We wanted to keep it quite short and concise, but be sure to subscribe because we're gonna release quite a few other videos and be sure to let us know in the comments below what kind of topic you want us to talk about. See you soon, cheers.